भूलो जावे रे मन तू भूलो जावे रे थारा सदगुरु रे समझावे रस्त आवे क्या नहीं रे थारा दिल गुरु रे समझावे रस्त आवे क्या नहीं रे anywhere you go across southern india south of deccan plateau wherever you go hundreds and hundreds why hundred thousands and thousands of shiva temples devotees of shiva they spend their lives everything on just building one temple every king had to build one temple every family which is of some worth they want to build a temple putting all their money into it if you look at the elaborateness with which they have built you can understand they should have spent their entire everything they had they themselves lived in small homes but they built magnificent temples because this is devotion towards whom towards shiva well shiva is a destroyer everywhere 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 it is clearly said he is not going to lift his little finger for you but people built temples and temples for him spending all their life's earnings on him a man who is not going to give you anything and not only that he is always looking at you like he is going to destroy you <laughs> you know that incident where the seven sages the saptarishis are uh, after decades of studying and learning and experiencing with him he says you go out into different lands across the world you must go and make people get acquainted with this science the yogic science 112 different ways so they are all prepared they don't want to go but they don't want to leave him and go but he is saying they must go so they are leaving so they say you are sen sending us into strange lands we don't know what kind of people we will meet you must understand it's not 21st century where you know what sort of people live in every corner of this world in every continent every little place what sort of people live there you know in some way at that time they don't even know in another part of the world whether there are human beings or giants or devils or who is there nobody knows so they are asking when we go there we don't know whether they will be receptive to us or not so in case we meet those kind of situations will you be there for us he looked incredulous he said what if you meet any kind of adversity like that he said i shall sleep why would you want to build a temple for this man <laughs> that's a devotee i want you to understand this is not coming from the intellect but these seven sages went out without understanding what he said because when you sleep you are one with everything if you sleep consciously you are 100% one with everything and consciously with everything see when you are awake you are a person when you sleep you are just life there's no limit actually this is why we've been telling you if you can cause that little awareness at that moment of going to sleep from that moment of wakefulness to sleep if you can be conscious something phenomenal will happen we've been telling you but you've been sleeping so he said i shall sleep he's not saying i will be there i will come and jump out of the sky and save you nothing he says i shall sleep but the devotees don't care whether he will come he will not come he will do something he will not do something i am saying there is no qualitative evaluation because they understand because they know from their 
it is not even understanding, they know from their innermost experience, their devotion has transformed them in such a phenomenal way, they don't care if it comes or doesn't come. That's devotion. You cannot do this with your intellect. You cannot do something illogical with your intellect. You can do some lousy logic. What is that dirty little logic you can do? But you have to do some logic. Even the most illogical idiot has his own little logic, dirty little logic. But with your intellect, you cannot do something illogical because that's the nature of the intellect. So, belief is done on the level of your intellect. You are trying to make logic out of something where there is no logic. Everybody is looking up, heavenward. I'm saying you, this is... Uh, this is increasing, I'm just saying. If you look at the old videos of fifties, sixties, uh, where uh, international football games, when people score a goal, they just jump in joy or shake hands, do something, they wouldn't hug each other because there were no deodorants at that time. But nobody looked up and praised the Lord. But today, almost everybody or most of them, the moment they score a goal on the cricket matches, well, Well, we have gone through this many, many, many times. The planet is round and it's spinning. You have no clue which is up. So definitely you have no clue what is up. Your goals are coming from there? No. It is just that you're trying to build confidence. So essentially, you build confidence. Belief builds confidence. Confidence will not give you clarity. Confidence will give you a bullheaded approach to life. You can doze yourself through life. Sometimes it works, unfortunately. That is not the nature of devotion. Just see how a devotee stands. He is never confident, always like this. But believers, because you believe some nonsense, you made it up. A devotee has not made up anything, he's just softened himself, softened himself, softened himself in such a way that life happens in a way that logic can never do, an intelligence beyond the limitations of your logic. Anybody who's applied their intellect substantially, if you apply your intellect, within no time you will hit the limits of where it is. Most people have never applied intensely enough, so they think their stupid little... what? dirty little logic. Maybe we should publish this poem. I'm beginning to like it. <laughs> this dirty little logic is limitless. So with this dirty little logic, it is your dirty little logic that right now where you live is not good. Your accommodations are not good. People that you live with are making you miserable. So with your dirty little logic, you created a better place up there. A devotee is not creating any place up there. He doesn't care whether he goes up or down. All he knows is his heart is overflowing with the sweetness of his own existence. Well, he may use a tool, he may use something to inspire him, but he is not making up things. So this is a fundamental difference between belief and devotion. You are... it's like this. Legs are for walking, hands are for doing things, but if you train your hands very well, you make it very strong, you can walk on your hands. 
And there are people who are handicapped, somebody has lost their arms, they are doing all kinds of incredible things, artwork with their feet. Some are doing, it's fantastic. But are your legs designed to work and hands designed, arms designed to walk? It is not. Similarly, your intellect is designed to dissect, to look at things logically and decipher a few things for yourself, for your survival. Your emotion is not... is not created or doesn't have the ability to decipher things. It knows only how to embrace something. If you want to know the sweetness of life, your emotion should flow. If you want to figure out a few things, your intellect should function. But now you're using your intellect like emotion, an emotion <laughs> The only emotion most people know is uh, stress, anxiety, resentment, anger. Once in a way, only on the Facebook, they feel some love. Because that's the safest place. That is the safest place for a love affair because you never have to encounter those people. So, let us understand this. Intellect is not designed to illogically make up something, it is designed to decipher life as it is, the physicality of it, the material of it, so that you can function efficiently. Emotion is not designed for that. Emotion is designed for you to experience life intensely. If you use it the other way around, you want to walk on your hands and work with your legs, all the best. like uh, this happened. Sankaran Pillai was walking in the Orli, what that? Orli, yeah? Sea face in Mumbai, post lockdown. So the first ones when the lockdown is released, the first ones that will come out are the criminals, the pickpockets, you know. Because uh, business is totally gone. <laughs> so Shankaran Pillai also took a walk. So an armed thug pulled out a country-made pistol, put it to his head and said, I'll blow your brains out, just give me the money. Shankaran Pillai said in, in Mumbai, you can live without brains, but you can't live without money. You can blow as much as you want, you're not getting my money. <laughs> brains needed, intellect needed for something, other things needed for other things <laughs>